Alexi here and welcome to Train Insane, a video series that will teach you how to fly your FPV drone and how to exceed your peers in doing so. If you are not familiar with anything that's on the screen right now, feel free to stop and just familiarize yourself with all of the information. This is how I'm saving time. Also, thank you very much to the sponsors of today's tutorial, which are Tattoo, Turbo, FPV24, and some smaller sponsors that you can see on the bottom of your screen. And also, thank you very much, Boner FPV, for creating this track so we can train on it, which is great. And today we're gonna be talking about corkscrews, which is something that I think is called differently in the US. And in which case, leave me a comment down below because I'm not entirely sure how it's called differently in the US, uh, but it's how we were usually calling it in Europe and on European uh, racing series. So this is what I'm currently gonna be using. This is not a power loop, not going like this. Uh, we're gonna be doing the same type of a movement, but on the side. And yeah, I think this is it. Without further ado, let's go. I guess it's the best to start with what is a corkscrew, is it? So I'm gonna show you the track. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is to go around up and down the obstacle. I'm gonna be going both ways, left, right, up, down, everything that you may imagine. There's also a little slalom involved, obviously. Um, so I actually made those signs of Velocidron, obviously, you know, a little bit mean. This is how it is. We're gonna be really close, so you may hate me a lot for doing this to you, but please trust me, this is for your own good. Trust me with that. And it's gonna be a lot of just going around left, right, left, right, uh, a little bit, you know, you may get dizzy after a little bit of doing this, so it's absolutely fine to make yourself a break. Okay, so this is exactly what we're gonna be doing throughout this entire training, and we're gonna be talking about all things, what to train, how to train, things like that. Now, let's get to it. Okay, so let's start with the beginner. If you are a beginner, you will probably hate me a lot for this track, I'm really sorry. Um, but you may be overshooting things a little bit, going too far, not being able to hit it, going up and down, and this is absolutely okay because this is why we are training. And also be sure to remember that you don't have to hit those little velocidrome things to get the thing going. Uh, although on the sides, I would prefer for you to hit those because you want to be as close as possible and this is going to be the movement that we are after. And yeah, as I said, if you are a beginner, you may be hitting things a lot. You may be like, oh my God, I can't really hit it. You may be hitting those trees a lot as well. They are put there for a reason, not only to be pretty, but also to you know, piss everyone off. Um, so you may be kind of struggling doing like, oh my God, where do I go? How do I turn? And things like this. And for this, I would actually say like uh, the turns training, uh, 3D turns training uh, would actually help you out in the entire process. So um, be sure to check those out and to follow our calendar so you will know what to do to train your things. Now, if you are a little bit more of an advanced pilot, then you're probably gonna be a little bit hitting all the trees. Um, this may happen a lot. Uh, and you may be looking much faster, but still a little bit jerky in a way, if you know what I'm saying, like see those movements, they are not smooth. They are more like, I'm going fast here and then kind of turning around, but really fast and things like this. This is like what I usually see with uh, intermediate pilots that you get a little bit, you know, ballsy and you're like, I know how to fly. And then, then it looks kind of like this and it looks pretty um, interesting. Like it, it looks fast, it looks dangerous. It looks a little bit like, oh, wow. Uh, this is interesting, uh, but it's not necessarily the best way of doing things. So you may be crashing a lot, you may be going places, fine. Uh, and this is exactly what we don't want to have. So I'm kind of like trying to mimic the movement here. Um, but yeah, if you are the advanced pilot, then you probably will know that smooth is fast, fast is smooth. We love this. Let's make a t-shirt. If I made a t-shirt like that, would you actually get it question to, to the comments um, but yeah you want to be as close to those obstacles as humanly possible so um, you want to do like a smooth movement so it can be connected with like it should be one movement of the stick 
in the perfect world, of course. Not every single one of them will be perfect. You may like turning left or turning right a little bit more. Um, depends. Uh, everything's, you know, different for everyone. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of trying to explain things. Uh, so this is the timing that we will try to follow for all of the explanations. So, so if you are above 70 seconds or a minute 10, you are probably a beginner pilot and you need to try to follow those cones on the ground because they show you right away where to start turning. They are there for really good reason. And I want you to even slow down change the angle of your camera, change it to 30, that's absolutely fine, and just try to follow the cones on the ground. This will actually help you out in figuring out where to start prepositioning yourself and how to make this flight as good as possible. Now, if you are above one minute, you're like 50 seconds to minute 10, something there, then you are probably around the intermediate level. And I want you to one, check what you are doing, record your screen and check if you are using the entire like stick input. Okay, because if you are an advanced pilot, you're probably using that much of a stick input instead of all of it, yeah? So this is exactly something that we would like you to go after. Um, so if you are below those 50 seconds, you are probably doing already a really good job and I just want you to work on making this movement as smooth as humanly possible. This is going to make things so much better for you and so much easier. It will look good and also it will be faster. The closer you get to the obstacle, the better for you, whether you are racing, freestyling or doing cinematic footage. Cinematic especially, you want to stay close to an obstacle that you are kind of orbiting or corkscrewing because then you can see all of those details in the camera, in the details of you know, the video. So this is what we want to go after. Now, let me show you how it's supposed to be done properly. And uh, I will not talk because what is Lexi doing? Leave me a comment below because you already know. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it and if you did don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up to help me make algorithm extremely happy and share those videos and tutorials with your friends who are just learning how to do FPV or want to get better at it. It really helps immensely to this entire series and makes me want to do obviously more. If you have any questions below and if you just have some comments or just want to leave me an emoticon, I love those. Just please 
talk to me. This is great. Uh, so thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you again to the sponsors of this video. And I hope to see you in the next week. And also, as last but not least, don't forget to download the monthly calendar, which is available for you for absolutely free and comes straight to your inbox every single month directly to your email. The link to it is down below in the description box. If you want a little bit more detailed tutorials about all of those obstacles, be sure to check out FPV Academy. We have an academy for people who are just getting into FPV and need to know a lot about all of the parts, how to pick them, how to build the drones. But we also have the FPV Academy Advanced, which is only about how to train, what to train and really extensive tutorials. So thank you very much for considering doing this. We also do have a community which is called The Collective and we are having live monthly calls on which we are discussing what people can be doing better with their actual skills. So this may be actually interesting. We also have a Discord channel on which which, uh, we're discussing a lot of things as well. So thank you very much for considering those. Yeah, I think this is it. That was a lot of talking. Uh, thank you very much again for watching this video and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Stay awesome fam, bye.